Welcome friends, Lost Garf here, and it's time for the one shot, and today I'm going to recommend This War of Mine. This is from 11-Bit Studios, it's a $20 game, it's been on sale a few times though, and has a $5 DLC to it. And this is a heck of a game. This War of Mine is... 11-Bit Studios, they made Anomaly, they've made some other games. I love Anomaly, if you've seen the one shots for Anomaly, I really enjoy those games, I really like that a lot. And this was an interesting game they made here. This War of Mine... It is a survival shelter management game where you try to keep a group of people alive during a war. They're just civilians trying to survive in a war zone, and it's up to you to make sure they do not succumb to the harsh environment. It is a very, very depressing game, but a compelling game. Also a very slow game at first, but it speeds up as you learn the game, and as you get upgrades to help you just get through things faster. The game can be played with a uh, controller, but I would recommend a mouse and keyboard for sure, and for the most part you can just play with a mouse. So what you're doing is you're just managing a group of people. In this run, you're going to see three people. It's uh, Bruno, Katia, and uh, Pavel, I think that's how you pronounce it. They each have different things that are good about them. And at the start, what you're doing is you're just rummaging through a shelter, finding supplies to keep you alive. You get a little bit of everything, and you're going to need supplies to build things so you can become more self-sufficient going forward. And just to try to not get killed by just the environment and by other things out there. So in the game, you're going through the daytime and then the nighttime. During the day, your survivors are making, cooking, building, doing whatever you need to do to survive with the supplies you have to keep yourself alive. You're trying to just protect the shelter, make weapons, make different tools for you, make things that you can use for trading, make things to keep your team alive with food or just other supplies, making bandages, making medicine, making cigarettes or making coffee, because your people can have addictions that they have to deal with for stress reasons. And you're also dealing with tiredness and illnesses and wounds from the night before, or just other things that could have happened to you. And on occasion, things will happen during the day. Maybe an event will happen, maybe a trader will show up so you want to trade with them, maybe your neighbor's going to need help. A bunch of different things can happen during the day. Even the militia might show up to give you some trouble. And when you build a radio, you can also listen to what's going on outside, and what's, uh, what's going on from just the military side of things, the new side of things, and just understand what's going on with the weather. Now when it's nighttime. You're having someone on guard, you're having someone maybe sleeping if they're sick or hurt or something like that, and then you have someone scavenge, or maybe you have everyone stay indoors that day, maybe it's just too dangerous to go outside, but if you have someone scavenge, you can only have one person going out, and the rest of them can stand guard or rest. Now when you're scavenging, you're searching a selected area that will have obstacles that you need to use certain items to get through, sometimes there are items that you can get through on, with hand, but you'll need a shovel if you want to go faster, or just things you need to break into, or you can lockpick. And the noise you make is important going on here. So, if you use a crowbar to open a door instead of a lockpick, it's going to be a lot noisier and it's going to draw attention to you, unless there's no one on the map. And if there's no one there, then it doesn't matter. But when you start interacting with other people, and considering maybe you want to rob people, or just don't want to trade with someone, you're going to get some attention if there's other people on the map. So you got to be very cautious and careful about that. Some people are into trade, some people are going to try to rob you, so it's a very dangerous situation. I've been going very tradey route, and just trying to be as peaceful as possible. But there are times when you're just not sure about the person you're walking towards, if you should walk towards them or sneak around them, because you don't know if they're going to try to rob you, if they're going to try to kill you. And you can be a, just a bad person. You can kill people and rob them of everything they've got, but it will affect your character. It will affect their mindset and how they are as a person. And there's only so much you can carry every scavenging night, so you end up just getting what you can, coming back, and you can go ahead and scavenge that place again and again and again, and just trying to survive. Now, the game is extremely bleak because you're in a war zone. You're trying to survive while there's a war going on and just trying to just not get killed during it. There are snipers in certain versions of the map where you can get killed if you're not in a good situation, which is not very good. Not good at all. And also, there's a karma going on in this game, which affects the ending. The way the game ends for you is you either die, you get left behind, you commit suicide, which would happen from stress levels or just things affecting your character, or there's these karma levels. There's the bad ending, an okay ending, and then the good ending. And that all depends on what you do while you're surviving out there. If you murder a bunch of people, that's going to affect your karma in a negative way. If you try to help people wherever you can, that will help you in a lot of ways. But the thing about good and bad is robbing people, of course, is a bad thing. But if you just can't survive without robbing, well, then what are you going to do? It's a question of how much are you willing to take morally before you succumb to either your morals or to life killing you. Like, what are you willing to do? Are you willing to rob these people to stay alive? Or are you not willing to rob people and you're willing to just die of starvation? Or die from hypothermia? Or die to your wounds from just things happening? Or die to sickness? What are you willing to do to stay alive? 
and what are you willing not to do to keep your morality? That's the question that happens there, and it affects your different characters in different ways, where some of them might not like each other because of what you've done. Though different characters have different dispositions, some of them would just totally be destroyed by taking a life, while other characters are perfectly fine with it, and you can actually just kill everyone with one of the characters in this game, and it does not affect them. They're just a psychopath. It's, it's nuts. But that's something I appreciate is that you have a different number of characters that you can have in this that can be affected in different ways by the game itself. Now, when you first play the game, you have the preset group that I have, but eventually you unlock more groups and more places for them to start. And it's a bit random where you start out, but you can also do write my own story mode where you just pick your number of characters. You can have one to four characters. You can pick uh, how harsh is the crime, how harsh is winter, whether winter even happens. And stuff like that, that's a thing. And you can just make it easier for you, or harder for you. Because the thing is, eventually the game does end. Eventually it ends by either you dying, all your people dying, or by the war ending, by them having peace. And you can actually choose to have it be like 20 days or 80 days. So it's like, can you survive that kind of marathon? Holy crap. And just stuff like that. Now if the game is not bleak enough for you, you can buy the DLC. This DLC includes children. So the DLC adds children to the mix. They, of course, have different wants and needs. You need to give them, like, toys to keep them a little bit happier so they're not really sad. I don't know if kids can kill themselves. I hope not. That's dark. And it's just, it's just so much more bleak. The thing about that DLC is $1 of that DLC goes to War Child, which is an actual charity for war orphans. So there's a thing right there. This is a game that's meant to make you feel, but it is also challenging. It is a very challenging game and just keeping your group alive, and I enjoy it a lot. It is just pretty slow at first, but it gets fast, and you understand why it's slow, because you're sifting through things. You're trying to survive and to take care of things, and eventually, as you get better with your uh, your items and everything, you're able to do things a little bit easier, and you need to, because things will get rougher as time goes on. You'll have less places to scavenge, you'll have just robbers getting more aggressive about things, and things like that. And just another challenge is people needing help, and whatever help they need is going to be even harder to do, so that's what's going to happen as well. Now, a successful run for me, it seems like it's about eight hours complete, the game is a bit slow at first, but once you know what you're doing, you can speed things up a little bit by just skipping to night and skipping to daytime whenever you know what exactly what you're doing. And because of the potential of characters and shelters you can start as, and things like that, this game can be played for tens, maybe even hundreds of hours. There's a lot of potential there to just play a lot. If you really like the challenge of this game, you really find it rewarding, this is a game you can play for a very long time. So it becomes very well worth the $20 and $25 if you buy the $5 DLC. So the positives I will see this game are, it is a compelling game, it's a very interesting game. For people who like management games, it will definitely be kind of a challenge for you. I really enjoyed the challenge of this game. When it comes to just feeling the bleakness of it, it, it really accomplishes that. You feel bleak, you feel very, it's a very depressing atmosphere, and they do a very good job of that. If you don't want to feel down, then probably not the game for you. But it is a compelling game about people trying to survive in war, and I like that a lot. I like it when games invoke different emotions out of me and they definitely did that with me with this game and just the thought of children involved in this just also just it's a dark place like jeez that's jeez the only real negative i have about this game is just how slow it feels and that's on purpose though because you're going through a day you need the slowness to just do things with three different characters if you have a party of three and it needs to be slow at points for you to just figure things out but there's points where it just feels like it's dragging on and i wish you could just fast forward I don't want to just skip tonight, I want it to fast forward. The other downside to it is it autosaves, and it only autosaves at the end of a day. That is it. You can't just stop in the middle, save, and then you're good. No, you have to wait for the day to end, and then your save is there. And that's an unfortunate feature, but I guess you can let it go. But the problem with that is you can always just load back if something goes wrong for that day, and then it might have a different situation happening to you. But also, of course, the other thing is, you know, people just save, see what results they get, and then reload and stuff like that. There's, there's a back and forth on that. But I would like the accessibility of a save, I feel. But there you go, that right there is the game. I had a lot of fun playing this game and I recommend it. I guess this is more of a review while recommending the game. It's not for everyone, but for those of you who it will touch, you will enjoy it a lot and find it rewarding, in my opinion. So that right there is This War of Mine from 11-Bit Studios. $20 game, $5 DLC. There's also a $1 DLC if you just want to donate to the charity. 100% of that goes to the charity. I had fun with this video, hope you had fun watching it. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks for coming by and see you next time.